Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? Gabe with another fan TV, man. And uh, we got the kind of, I guess, the, the first bit of Lamar Jackson news, if you want to call it that. Um, Ian Rappaport goes on to the uh, Pat McAfee show pretty much every week. And, you know, he's, a, he's an NFL insider, gives information out, things like that. And pretty much what he said is that he expects Lamar Jackson to be tagged this offseason, all right? Uh, franchise tag. So um, that's kind of the first domino that we've heard as far as real news with somebody who knows what they're talking about. Um, that's in that NFL world regarding Lamar Jackson, right? Now, a couple of takeaways from this. Obviously, to me, it's not um, unexpected, but it still is disappointing. Um, you know, you wanted the Ravens to be able to reach that long-term deal initially without having to do the franchise tag, but it doesn't always work like that. Next thought is that um, he said that he expects the Ravens to use the exclusive franchise tag on it. So there are three different kind of franchise tags, all right? or yeah, three, three different kind of franchise tags, okay? The non-exclusive tag, which is about, I think, $32 million, which means that Lamar can negotiate with other teams and that the Ravens can match an offer sheet if he's offered a contract with another team, right? There's a transition tag where the guy pay him top 10 of the position, so it might be around the same as 32, a little bit lower. Uh, but the same thing, you know, match an offer sheet if a team um, offers Lamar Jackson a contract. Then there's the exclusive tag, which he expects that for the Ravens to offer which is going to be about $45, $46 million. And that tag means that nobody can negotiate with Lamar Jackson and that he's going to be the Ravens player for that upcoming season, right? Now, the franchise tag window is like, it starts, I think it's the end of February and goes to like beginning of March. So it's like, I know last year it was like February 22nd to March 8th when you can choose the players who, who are going to be franchise tag. Um, so that's when it, you know, if it does happen, that's when it will happen somewhere between that window. And they have until, I believe, July, end of July, to get a deal done. If they don't get a deal done by July, then he's just going to play out the season on the franchise tag. All right. Now, um, as far as, as the news, like I said, it's just kind of disappointing you wanted to hear that. But I will say this. If it is going to be the exclusive franchise tag, that's probably the best news that the Ravens fans could ask for. Just simply because of the fact that that means with the exclusive franchise tag, um, there's no going to be no other teams in the mix. All right. Now, obviously, at least the fact that the Ravens could obviously work out a deal and still trade them and things like that. But as far as a team offering Lamar Jackson a contract and the Ravens having to match, no other team can do that if the Ravens offer him that exclusive franchise tag. Now, the fr exclusive franchise tag, like I said, is $45, 46000000 million. It's big money. The Ravens don't have that cash base right now, right? Uh, yesterday, I put up a community post showing that the NFL cap is going up to $224 million, almost two twenty five, something like that. And I think the Ravens have something around 30 plus million, maybe $28 million in cash space, something like that. So if they were to do that with Lamar Jackson, some players are going to have to go. You know, there's, there's your Chuck Clarks. There's a guy that we all love as Gus Edwards. There's, um, you know, Calais Campbell has a $9 million cap hit. Uh, but if he retires, that obviously that changes. Or if he decides to come back, the Ravens can restructure his contract in a different way. But if the Ravens were to move forward with this plan of tagging Lamar Jackson because they cannot get a deal finished, cannot get a deal accomplished, um, they're going to switch some things around. They're going to switch some things around. And listen, I know a lot of people are saying that the Ravens screwed up this, this country situation. And I don't disagree. Uh, the Ravens should have signed Lamar Jackson to a contract two years ago. Uh, right after Josh Allen got his contract, the Ravens should have one dollar more than Josh Allen. Boom, settled it right there. Uh, they decided to wait. They decided to uh, procrastinate on, on the situation, and now they're they're in a tough rock. They're, they're they're in a tough situation. They're in a tough boat right now. This is it's not an easy solution. It's not an easy situation just to be like, oh, it's okay, everything is all right. Now for for the next year, even the year after that, you know. Like they, they, they can tag Lamar twice before they can't do it no more, obviously. Um, <laughs> will they do that? I don't know. I think the chances of Lamar Jackson being a Raven is probably 50-50. You know, and that's the first time um, I think I said that on here, but you know, I said, you know, talking to people, whatever, but I think it's about 50-50, bro. Like, the Ravens have gotten themselves and kind of backed into a corner. But Shadi came out a long time ago pretty much saying that he was against guaranteed contracts and we're not going to do what the Browns are going to do and offer this and that. And hey, man, listen, do you. I'm, I'm just telling you, this is what they're willing to do that. 
You know, the latest rumor is about Lamar Jackson and, and, and the Falcons. And if we think about it, last year, who was in on Deshaun Watson? It was the Browns, it was the Falcons, and I believe the Panthers. So if the Falcons want Lamar Jackson, I wouldn't be surprised they gave the capital to try to get him. You know what I mean? So um, the Ravens have backed themselves into a corner. They have backed themselves into a corner. Now, um, do I? Is, is there's no bend for certain that Lamar Jackson wants a fully guaranteed deal, so I'm not saying that's 100% for certain or anything like that. Um, but I do remember listening to the Pivot Podcast uh, Ryan Clark had Ryan Clark and the guys. They had um, Demora Smith on, who's obviously NFLPA, um, you know, head. And basically, he was saying that you know they are fully behind Lamar Jackson. They have all the information, and they've given it to him about trying to pursue a guaranteed contract and things like that. If that's what he so chooses to do, so you got a guy that's kind of putting out the kind of hitting that, like yeah, like you know, he's at least exploring this option. Because in my mind, I'm not sure what else could hold up the negotiation. Eric DeCosta, John Harbaugh, they always they, they 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 put the lip service to it that we want him to be our quarterback. We want him here. We love Lamar Jackson. This and that. Hey, at some point, you got to put monetary value behind the love. You got to do it. And the biggest thing is, it's almost like Lamar Jackson is being caught between the game between the NFL and the NFLPA because um, Deshaun Watson contract unprecedented. Because then right after that, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson both get paid. They're not fully guaranteed deals. But these NFL players deserve more guarantees in their contract, man. They play a violent game. And the money just continues to go up as far as what the league makes. Leagues make billions and billions of dollars. The guys who own these teams make billions, billions and billions of dollars. I think about the Broncos, right? The Broncos owner, he, uh, she is one of the Waltons. So, you know, like Walmart, right? Her net worth is $60 billion. $60 billion. So you got a quarterback, and I say they got Russell Wilson, right? You're telling me you're net worth $60 billion, and you can't guarantee $250? I'm not going to have any sympathy for owners on that. Now, you can say, well, look, what about the team? Mess up the cap? Listen, I understand. I get all of that. But at the end of the day, the quarterback is the star. He's the franchise. He's the front of the organization. If that guy's not happy, it's hard. To, it's hard to say that you have a happy organization. Um. So, um, like I said, man, corner Ian Rappaport, the Ravens are going to tag Lamar Jackson this offseason. He expresses to be the exclusive tag. And um, yeah, man, the Ravens offseason is now up and rolling. We'll see what happens if that truly comes to be. If the Ravens work out a deal before then. We shall see. But until next time, man, it's your boy Gabriel. Just on the fan TV. I'm out.